yo, 2023, I'm really happy for you. I'm going to let you do your thing, but 2024 is about to be the best motherfucking year for video games in a long, long time. Just kidding. 2023 was a monumentous year for AAA gaming, but 2024 is aiming to be something a little bit different. Matter of fact, by the time that I'm done talking to you about these games, you might think it has the potential to be even better if you think like I do. <laughs> and that's because we're going to be talking about indie games and games you probably just haven't heard of because they haven't been hyped up by the mainstream media. The I knew about that game before it was popular type games. I knew about that game before IGN posted an article about it. I knew that game before PewDiePie played it. If you're like me, that type of claim to fame means everything. But that's enough talking for now. Let's get this show on the road. And thankfully, the year starts fast. On February 22nd, we have Pacific Drive from Ironwood Studios. The basic plot of the game is you drive your car around the Pacific Northwest, battling the nature and crazy stuff going on out there. Go out, collect things, come back to the garage, upgrade your car, and go out again, further and further, finding secrets, exploring locations, a very unique gameplay that we've never seen before. It's all based in the car, the physics look cool, the environment looks cool. If you like driving cars, this might be the one for you, buddy. It comes out soon, so uh, start those engines. On the same day, February 22nd, we're gonna have Nightingale from Inflection Games. This is a game that some of you have probably heard of by now because it's gaining traction quickly, but it's a co-op survival game. You survive, collect materials like wood to build bases. The twist on this one is that once you've built your base and essentially conquered the world that you're in, you collect these cards that can help generate a new world. So you kind of have a little bit of voice in the way you customize this next world you're going to land on. And then after that, you kind of travel between the different worlds you've created, collecting materials, sharing the materials, advancing further and further through the difficulties and the different biomes you can discover. Pretty cool. I like a good co-op survival game, and this is looking to be that. In quarter one, we're expecting Deep Rock Galactic Survivor. In this game, of course, you're gonna be mining for materials and breaking down obstacles that are gonna be in your way on this 2D plane here, which is a welcome addition because there hasn't really been much innovation on the formula since its inheritance. I'm just happy to see a big name like Deep Rock supporting the genre. It should help bring life to it and uh, keep it around for a while. Next, we have Manor Lords from Slavic Magic coming out on April 26th. One man is making this game in its medieval setting. Kind of start from like a small shire and you build like in this strategy sim city type game. You know, you're building your village, collecting resources. Enemy tribes start to come attack you. You eventually level up your little shire into like a big city diplomacy aspects of the game. Honestly, it looks really good for a solo developer game. Should be fun, unique, sim, building, strategy, cool enough for me. Next, we have a little bit of a curveball in Nine Souls, expected in quarter one, 2024, influenced by Eastern Taoist mythology. I think it's Taoist. Correct me if I need to be corrected, please interesting aspect of this game is that it has a self-proclaimed Sekiro like combat with hard and unique bosses and if you know me you know Sekiro is one of my favorite games of all time it'll probably have a pretty quiet launch but it's one of those games that I'm personally very hyped for and hope it succeeds Moving on into the springtime of 2024, we have Still Wakes the Deep from The Chinese Room. It's a survival horror game based on an oil rig in the middle of an ocean. Enough said, right? A little bit of Bioshock vibes, but you know, it's definitely gonna stand out on its own. Hopefully it delivers on the scary part because you're not gonna be fighting back. You're literally just gonna be surviving, doing puzzles, running away. If they can nail the spookiness of being in the middle of the ocean, I think that we could have a hit on our hands in the indie horror genre.
Also coming out sometime in the spring is Rika from Ember Storm Entertainment. Gamer Chicks Rejoice. It's a witch simulator where you can collect plants, create potions, and decorate your house. Your chicken house. You can also tame wildlife, among other activities. I'm not really sure if there's combat. From what we see, there is no combat, but that's okay. Honestly, I think this could be a big sleeper here. It's a, one of those cozy games and will genuinely probably be a hit with those Animal Crossing type gamers. Now for the games that we're not exactly sure when they're coming out, but they should be coming out in 2024 is Sword of the Sea from Giant Squid. Been waiting on a new skate game? Well, this is gonna have to hold you over. There's fluid hover sword movement and physics that feel like a board. Some of the devs that worked on that old PlayStation game Journey, yeah, they're working on this game as you can see the direct influence here. And Journey was like a masterpiece, so I expect nothing less of this one. It looks really good. The graphics are clean. It's all about deep exploration with a deep meaning. Should make for a pretty good time for us chill gamers. The long lost Mugenics from Edmund McMillan and Tyler Glale should be coming out this year. It was announced about 10 years ago. The concept is you breed cats and fight them. It sounds ridiculous, but it's just my type of ridiculous. So shout out to these guys for keeping at it. We should be seeing Routine from Lunar Software. This game has been delayed for 10 years as well. It's now using Unreal Engine 5, which is a nice upgrade. It makes you wonder how many assets they're using from the original iterations of the game. It's a sci-fi horror, but the trailer doesn't say much. The little that it does show, though, is beautiful. Funcom should be blessing us with Dune Awakening, an online survival MMO. Lots of buzzwords I know, but it's basically like one of those Ruster art games again, build a base with your clan and attempt to rule the server. But this game kind of gives slight vibes of Conan Exiles. It's, it probably has something to do with being in the sand. Either way, lots of focus is being put into this game because it's a big IP. Funcom has a lot of experience working on MMOs in the past. I can't say any of them were very good, but if they put all their cards together and learn from their mistakes of the past, this could be a really good game. At least I think it should be good for the first month until those Chinese players get their hands on the American servers. I think my ARC players are gonna feel me on that one. The anime MMO Blue Protocol from Bandai Namco should be coming out in US this year. It's already been launched in Japan. We can see a lot about the game already. In my opinion, it's much more a co-op online RPG than an MMO that has six classes you can change between at any point. There might be some pay to win elements and there's no PVP. It'll probably be fun, but I'm not a huge on MMOs without PVP. Even if it means sacrificing their past. Here's an MMO I am excited about. Project LLL from NCSoft. Continuing the MMO trend, I'm dying for the next big MMO. And out of all of them, this one looks to be the most legit. Beautiful graphics, I'm starting to see a trend. Unreal Engine 5 might be the GOAT. Third person to first person gunfights, I'm not so sure how I feel about that. But the mech combat kind of resembles Titanfall. Open world PvE and PvP? A seamless 30 kilometer size map with unique biomes? And unlike most Korean MMOs, Project LLL is aiming for a global launch this year. Silently, probably my most anticipated game this year. I believe the only reason it's not being as hyped as it should is because it's coming from NCSoft, a Korean developer which is known for making MMOs and it's also known for making pay to win MMOs that gives its Korean players first serve on all the new content. I think they could turn it around with this one though. I got my fingers crossed. Next, we have a dinky game from Playgenics, Fear Underground. Going from absolute mind-blowing awesomeness to this doesn't feel right, but this game aims to capture the fears of someone with claustrophobia and the dark, dank tunnels of medieval times. Hoping it will be something like Limbo, 
If anything, it will be a neat little one-off experience with decent atmosphere. What a place is this? I can't handle this. Fear Underground. This one right here is a major sleeper. I have heard very little about it. Harold Halibut from Slow Bros. No, not the Pokemon. Art style, art style, art style. If this game doesn't get nods, nothing will. This is a narrative focused game. We'll follow this man Harold on his journey of friendship. He's trapped in a spaceship the size of a city as he tries to find his way to a new home. Along the way, he meets many people and they may change their mind. All I know is that this art style is fucking amazing. Is a foot. We can expect Towerborn sometime in 2024 from Stoic. It looks like a Castle Crashers game, but without the deeply inspired aesthetic. It definitely has more RPG elements, a little bit more freedom and movement and combat. It looks like a more mature version of Castle Crashers, and that's okay because I've matured since Castle Crashers came out. It'll probably be great to play couch co-op or with a couple buddies online. I'll probably be playing this with my girlfriend. Together? You can save humanity. They are here, Alien Abduction Horror from Deklazan. It's a alien horror survival game. What else is left to say? There's been a few attempts at a game like this, but none of them have really hit the mark. This one looks pretty good. I can't say I'm a big fan of the scanners. Those things are kind of getting on my nerves in these horror games, but the aliens look spooky and people have been wanting a good alien abduction horror game for a long time. And if they nail it, then they'll make a lot of money, trust me. Next up is a game that I've been seeing for a while, Sons of Valhalla from Pixel Chest. It looks like a badass Viking game with a handcrafted world. You follow a Viking in his story of revenge. You build bases and attack enemy tribes all along a 2D plane. You can send in your troops like a strategy game or go into battle with them yourself. Siege weapons will eventually be built to take down the biggest enemy fortresses. And yeah, overall, I think it's a very good looking game. It could be very chill and I'm looking forward to that. That's kind of my style nowadays. Moon Studios, the creators of Ori and the Blind Forest will be bringing no rest for the wicked this year. Expect some precision based combat, which spans a variety of planes. It's not just a 2D game like they're past games, a grungy art style, an RPG that's going to let you purchase property and craft goods. It kind of reminds me of a budget fable, except this one also allows online co-op. This game seems to be picking up a lot of traction already because of its stylized trailer that was announced at the Game Awards. I was never really a huge fan on Ori, but we'll see about this game. It could be pretty big. Storming into the year is Stormgate from Frost Giant Studios. Frost Giant Studios is a conglomerate of a lot of ex-Blizzard devs, the people that worked on StarCraft and WarCraft, the last great RTS games. The RTS genre has kind of fallen off majorly in the past 10 years, and these guys are trying to revive it, at least for the diehard fans. Stormgate aims to be a competitive RTS game that they can introduce to a new audience. It does look very good. I might give it a shot. It's just so fast paced those games. We'll see. But competitive strategy fans should rejoice nonetheless. Fight. Cower. Either way, your world will fall. Hyperlight Drifter gets a sequel in Hyperlight Breaker from Heart Machine. I'm not really sure it's a direct sequel, but it's definitely taking place in the same universe. Infinite procedurally generates worlds. You can play single or co-op. It's essentially a roguelike where you can build and craft stuff on every new run. More hoverboards. Is 2024 the year of the hoverboard? It looks pretty advantageous for a roguelike. I've heard clamor of the size and scope of this roguelike and how difficult it is to randomize a big world and make it engaging. They could pull it off with today's tech and I guess we'll just find out later this year. At number 22, we have Mirthwood from Bad Ridge Games. 
Now this is some real low-key gangsta shit. An RPG life sim that allows you to explore, gather, and fight. When you return home, Animal Crossing. The art style just makes me want to bundle up with a cup of joe and romance whatever and whoever I can. If the depth is present, don't be surprised when your Animal Crossing friends start telling you about this game. Big if. But just listen to the narrator of this trailer. And stumble upon mysteries across the world. Yeah, it's the vibe all right. Sad Cat Studios should be bringing us Replaced this year. In Replaced, you play as an AI trapped in a human's body with a focus on the cinematic experience. You will also experience some combat with the engaging story. Not much else is said about this game, but damn. Just look at the trailer. You guys enjoy this for a bit. And last but not least, I'm gonna throw a curveball at you guys. It's Neon Prime from Valve. It's a completely unannounced game. There's rumors about it. It might never even come out. I figured I'd spill the beans on this one because they think it should come out this year. Some information has leaked. It's a third person MOBA light taking place on this huge map. There's gonna be classes kind of like Team Fortress 2, not characters like Dota destructible environments. There's not much to show for it right now, but it sounds pretty awesome. And like I said, there's tons of indicators that if this game comes out, it should come out this year, as it's been being tested for the past couple years pretty regularly. And there you have it. 24 games that you've probably never heard of coming out in 2024. If you had to pick a game, which one do you think you'd be interested in? Do you believe in the power of underground gems? I know I do. I like to think of myself as an underground gem sometimes too. Just waiting on my time to shine, baby. Oh, ricochet, 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 yeah.